Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. The organelle looks like a part of a spherical structure. Structure X looks like pores. C and D are wrong because the nuclear envelope shouldn't have ribosomes on the surface, while the tonoplasts shouldn't have plasma desmata. A is wrong as ribosomes should be larger than structure X and look spherical rather than pore-like. So, the organelle is the nuclear envelope and X is the nuclear pores. Cell surface membranes can form vesicles during endocytosis. Endoplasmic reticulum forms vesicle to transport polypeptides to the Golgi body. Golgi body can form secretory vesicles for exocytosis. Let's identify 1 to 3. Ribosomes synthesize polypeptides. Lipid synthesis is a function of smooth ER. Hydrolytic enzymes are packaged by the Golgi body into lysosomes to remain in the cell. Now, let's look at the description of their appearances. V is the smooth ER. W is non-membrane bound and spherical. It is a ribosome. X has a double membrane and pores. It is the nucleus. Y is cylindrical and non-membrane bound. So, it is the centrioles. Z is a description of the Golgi body. Most plant cells have a tonoplast as they have a large vacuole. The sieve tube element is the only one in the options without a vacuole and tonoplast, as it has peripheral cytoplasm. Chloroplast, mitochondria and nuclei are surrounded by double membranes. Plant vacuoles are only surrounded by a single membrane, the tonoplast. Side distinct that mitochondria evolve from bacteria due to the common features they share. They both have circular DNA and 70S ribosomes. The folded into the membrane of mitochondria has nothing to do with the hypothesis. Viruses can only contain either DNA or RNA. So, ribose and deoxyribose won't be present in all viruses. Thymine is only found in DNA, so RNA viruses wouldn't have it. Cytosine is the only one that can be found in both DNA and RNA, hence present in all three of them. To carry out a semi-quantitative test on a reducing sugar solution, we need to standardize the volume of Benedict's solution and the test solution. Boiling time must be constant too, for a valid comparison. Boiling with hydrochloric acid and neutralization is only required for the test of non-reducing sugar. The secondary structure of proteins is held by hydrogen bonds between the oxygen of the CO group of one amino acid and the hydrogen of the NH group of another. It is shown in 1. Bond 2 is the peptide bond. It holds the primary structure. Bond 3 is the disulfide bridge. It is one of the bonds for the tertiary structure. 1 is correct as the question says that insulin has two polypeptide chains. 2 is wrong as there are only 6 sulfur containing amino acids. 2 of them can form a disulfide bond. So the maximum number of disulfide bonds is only 3. 3 is correct as the hydrophobic core is found in all globular proteins. The property of water which helps to maintain blood plasma at a stable temperature is the specific heat capacity. Water has a high specific heat capacity meaning it requires a large quantity of energy to increase the temperature. The heat of vaporization is the heat energy required to change water from its liquid state to vapor. It is irrelevant in this case. The activation energy is the minimum amount of extra energy required by the substrate to be converted into the product. B shows the energy the substrate gains before the reaction takes place, so it is the answer. Q shows a lower rate of enzymatic reaction when substrate concentration is low. However, it approaches Vmax at high substrate concentration. So, this is a line when the competitive inhibitor is present. 2 and 3 are the descriptions of competitive inhibitors. 1 is for non-competitive inhibitor since it doesn't bind to the active site. 4 is wrong because a higher temperature should increase the rate of reaction rather than cause a decrease. A is incorrect. A receptor molecule is highly specific to its ligand. It cannot recognize all ligands in the body. B is the answer. The binding may cause a conformational change to the receptor, which leads to the subsequent steps. 
C is wrong because receptors can be found on the cell surface membrane too. Their location depends on the types of ligands. D is incorrect as the same ligand can only be produced by a specific signaling sending cell in our body. A cell wall is fully permeable, so C and D are both wrong. If the cell contents have a lower water potential, water should move in by osmosis, so A is incorrect too. The greater the surface area to volume ratio, the greater the rate of diffusion. In the table, 4 has the greatest surface area to volume ratio, hence the greatest diffusion efficiency. Notice how its length and width are very much greater than its height. So, this is a flattened structure. A and B are wrong because they mention the change of only one aspect. Without knowing the other two, there is no way to know the total surface area to volume ratio. With that said, we can't possibly say how it affects the rate of diffusion. D is wrong because, as a block of fixed volume is elongated, its surface area to volume ratio would increase. It leads to an increase in the rate of diffusion. A cell cycle is composed of the interface, nuclear division, and cytokinesis. One is due to the growth of the cell during interface and the division of cytoplasm in cytokinesis. Three occurs during interface. Only two is the feature of mitosis. Chromosomes appear as two chromatids after the DNA replication in interphase and condensation in early prophase. So, this appearance can be seen in prophase and metaphase, before the chromatids separate in anaphase. The percentage is the cell number in prophase and metaphase divided by the total number of cells, then multiplied by 100. The answer is B. A is incorrect as the parts being removed are introns, not exons. B is wrong since the difference between DNA and mRNA is the presence of thymine or uracil. They are pyrimidines, not purines. C is the correct statement. D is wrong because an mRNA nucleotide contains a ribose sugar, not deoxyribose sugar. Both DNA template strain and RNA polymerase are involved in transcription, but not translation. Anticodons are involved in translation only, but not transcription. A gene codes for the production of a polypeptide. It is wrong to say it codes for the production of amino acids because the information in a gene determines the sequence of amino acids being added to polypeptide, not the synthesis of the amino acid. The DNA triplet is GCA, so the mRNA would have CGU as the codon. This codon codes for arginine. If the first base in DNA is substituted for an A, it becomes ACA. In mRNA, it will be UGU, which codes for cysteine. A xylem vessel has no cytoplasm at all. A foam sieve tube element has no nucleus. Only companion cell has the organelle stated. Hydrogen bonding between water molecules is known as cohesion. Adhesion is the interaction between water molecules and the wall of the structure they are in. There are a few things you need to know about a xerophytic leaf to answer the question. First, it curls or rolls when losing water. Secondly, this effect is due to the hinge cells, which shrink to curl the leaf. In the diagram, Y is the layer of the hinge cells. When they are turgid, the leaf does not curl. When they shrink, the leaf curls towards them. Hence, 1 and 2 are correct. P has a higher or less negative water potential compared to Q. Water enter layer Y in P and move out in Q, causing Q to curve but not P. 3 is wrong as it is an opposite statement from 1 and 2. 4 is correct as the question wants a statement describing the condition after 45 minutes. There was a net movement of water in the beginning, but after 45 minutes, it would have reached an equilibrium. So, there should not be any net movement of water anymore. Sucrose can diffuse into the companion cell and then to the sieve tube element. Since it diffuses in water, it can also move by apoplast and symplast pathway. Companion cells actively pump protons to the apoplast, so that sucrose can be co-transported back via the co-transported protein. Then, due to the increased sucrose concentration in the companion cell, sucrose will diffuse passively into the sieve tube element via the plasmodesmata. One is a neutrophil, 
it has a multi-lobe nucleus. Even though we can't see the nucleus of cell 2, judging from its large size, it should be a monocyte. 3 has a large circular nucleus that occupies most of its cytoplasm. This is a characteristic of lymphocytes. 5. The innermost layer is the endothelium. It is made up of squamous cells, so both B and C are correct for this. 4 is the second layer called tunica media. It is composed of smooth muscle cells and elastic fibers. 3 is the outermost layer, tunica adventitia or tunica externa. It contains a lot of collagen fibers. An artery has a thicker wall and smaller lumen to its diameter compared to a vein. So, one is an artery and two is a vein. Carbon dioxide is produced by respiring tissue. It will diffuse out of the cell, entering tissue fluid and then the blood. Fatty acids are needed by our body cells. They are transported in our blood, then to the tissue fluid and supplied to the cells. White blood cells move around almost everywhere in our body to perform their functions as our defense mechanism. Proteins, such as enzymes, antibodies, and hormones can be found in both the blood and the tissue fluid. Carbonic anhydrase catalyzes the formation of carbonic acid from carbon dioxide and water. Then, its dissociation into proton and bicarbonate ions. So, its inhibitor would affect 2 and 3. The wave of excitation was generated by the SAN. It will then spread through atria, leading to atria systole. Then, AVN is stimulated. This delays the impulse. The impulse is then passed down the perchite tissue in the septum. It reaches the apex and then spread in the ventricular wall, causing ventricular systole. One is when the pressure in the ventricle exceeds the pressure in the atrium. AV valve closes to prevent backflow. Two is the point where the pressure in the ventricle becomes higher than the aorta. The semilunar valve opens to allow blood to move out from the ventricle to the aorta. Three is when the pressure of the ventricle drops below the pressure of the aorta. The semilunar valve must close to prevent a backflow. At four, the pressure in the ventricle starts to become lower than that of the atrium. AV valve opens to allow blood to enter the ventricle from the atrium. When our breathing rate is low, oxygen diffuses into our blood more slowly. So, D is a correct statement. A is wrong as the carbon dioxide concentration in the pulmonary artery will always be higher. This allows the diffusion of carbon dioxide from our blood to the alveolar space near the lungs. B is incorrect as carbon dioxide moves by diffusion. C is wrong because, in a normal circumstance, the air in alveoli always has a higher oxygen concentration, so it will diffuse into our blood. All airways have epithelium as their surface layer. Bronchioles have muscle tissue too for dilation and constriction. Bronchioles do not have goblet cells. Malaria is caused by plasmodium, which is a type of protoctis. Its transmission requires female anopheles as the vector. Bacteria gain resistance alleles by mutation. This leads to a genetic variation, where some individuals have resistance while the rest do not. When they are exposed to the antibiotics, those cells with the resistance allele can survive and reproduce. They pass down the allele to the next generation, causing more and more individuals in the population to have the characteristic. The zone of inhibition forms when bacteria are killed by the antibiotic diffuses out from the digs. The larger the zone, the more cells are killed, indicating a lower resistance. So, the most effective antibiotic creates the greatest zone of inhibition while the least effective one won't kill that many cells, forming the smallest zone. Both macrophages and neutrophils are phagocytes. They specialize in phagocytosis. T-killer cells secret cytotoxin to kill infected cells. Their role is not to engulf non-self particles. Infection is a natural active immunity. It is natural as it is not being induced artificially by humans. It is active because the infected person would develop an immune response to produce antibodies and memory cells. 
That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and see you again soon. Bye.